All right, guys, welcome back to the channel here. Thank you guys for tuning in. It has been a hot minute. It's been like negative two degrees out, and which means it's like 10 degrees in the shop here. So it's just an absolute nightmare of freezingness. So I haven't wanted to touch anything, but um, getting back to everything we have going on here, I did start pulling down the valve cover um, so I can remove the cams. Um, remove the head, put the new head gasket in for this engine since I'm going to be running this for now until I can really start. Um, if you guys saw the last episode, you'll notice I am missing these uh, front cam caps until I can find those or if I can get another set and have this head line board. Um, I won't be able to run this engine for a little bit, um, but I was also thinking if these cams, since they are HKS cams, if they fit in this engine here, I may run those, depending on what size they are. They may be a bit obnoxious, but it would be real nice to have a little bit of a cam upgrade, depending on which ones those are. So I'm gonna try to figure out what those are as well. And um, yeah, just kind of dive into it. I'm gonna start by removing the head off this and try to get that TRD head gasket in. Something you guys are going to want to know, if you've never done this before, like removed cans from an engine, remove them kind of evenly, remove these can caps evenly, because I've heard many times people will remove like one or two, it'll run down the line, and what'll happen is because of the valve spring pressure, it'll push up on the cam, and it'll snap, literally snap the camshaft, because it's just a cast camshaft, and there'll be like some sort of failure point within it so when you go to do that it'll find that failure point just crack it so when you do it just try to unbolt them evenly so for right now i'm just going to crack them all loose and then i'll just kind of work on them evenly there So another thing you guys will notice is when you go to remove a lot of these things, they'll all be stamped. So for example, uh, this one here has an arrow that points that way. This one has an E on it saying this is exhaust. And then it, does, it says OT, which I'm assuming is just how they mark the last one. Usually it'll say, or actually no, that's five. I'm dumb. It says five. But so here's an arrow, it says E4, arrow forward E3, arrow forward E2. And then just E, and you know this is the cam seal one because it goes in the very front. Same with over here. I for intake. You'll run down one, two, or sorry, two, three, four, and five. And that's how you'll notice because if you if you get this, say if you take your engine to a machine shop, you want to verify everything. If they have one of these on backwards, they didn't do their job right because you're supposed to make sure all of these pointed forward toward the front of the engine, which front of the engine is considered where the timing belt goes if you didn't already know that but yeah all right so i removed the cams everything in here is looking good these are your lifters here if you guys didn't know that now i do still have to remove the distributor because it does block one of the head bolts down there and then both cams are here i noticed there is a little bit of scoring on some of the journals um, i can't feel it with my fingernail or anything so i should be okay but aside from that, um, I think both of these cams are the same exact spec, but you can't inter swap them because one does have the gear for the distributor on there. But if we come over here to the supercharged engine, notice the HKS cams have the gear on both of these. So you can run it on the intake or the exhaust side because they're both same exact cam basically on each side. Um, and on the back, it does have stamped on this one here, 256 for the intake and a 264 for the exhaust side. So I'm debating swapping those over into this head so I have a little bit more airflow, basically. 
I'm seriously considering that. All right, I took a bit of time to do some research on these HKS cams and they're designed for both the 4AGE and the 4AGZE, so it doesn't matter which one is which. Uh, with intake and exhaust, the duration just being a little bit longer, the 8.1 um, valve max lift on it, should actually work perfect in this engine. Apparently those cams can also work with the factory ECU. And so I figure with the turbo and those cams, I'm gonna have a lot better flowing engine. So I'm gonna slap those cams in here as well once I'm going back together. All right, so the socket that fits the head bolts is a 10 millimeter 12 point. So um, I don't have a half inch, but I do have a half inch drive socket with half inch to quarter inch, or sorry, half inch to three eighths inch adapter, which I'm going to be using to break them all loose. Of course, they're only torqued to 44 foot, foot pounds, but uh, over time they'll kind of naturally get tighter. So yeah. I just got all the head bolts pulled, head is still on the block, but I did notice the exhaust side head bolts are uh, about an inch longer than the intake side one, so I will have to keep that in mind as well. damage the head surface I did lay it on some microfiber cloth so we're good there but overall looking at everything here there is of course a bunch of carbon buildup it's kind of what I was expecting I mean it's you know 120 130,000 miles on this engine and yeah I mean it's 30 something years old um, I don't see any like major scoring in the cylinder that see it actually looks really good. Aside from that, just looks like a little bit of corrosion that was building up in the cylinders. I'm not sure from what, but it doesn't look too horrible. I'll probably rotate the engine over to check cylinder one and four as well. Now the person who did have it did not do frequent coolant changes because if you can see it all down in there, there's just a bunch of corrosion buildup in the block from never having any oil changes done so definitely uh, i'm gonna try to clean that up as well i did get some of this valvoline radiator super cleaner that should hopefully help with that i'm not exactly sure how that's gonna work but we're gonna find out to ensure i don't damage the the surface of the block as well when i go to scrape any other residue from this gasket off of here, I just have to make sure I'm not scoring or damaging the, the surface, the mating surface or everything so it can properly seal. Now, I want to say this is not an OE gasket. This looks almost like a Felpro gasket. So I want to say this has probably been replaced before. For what reason? I'm not sure because it doesn't look like there would have been anywhere it would have blown at all, but 
who knows? There's a lot of things that can happen in 120,000 miles. And if you're worrying about me scraping any of this and it getting down into the oil pan, oil pan's coming back off to get the turbo oil drained. So I'm not too worried about that. All right, I pretty much cleaned the gasket surface up for the most part, rotated the engine over, checked cylinder one and cylinder four. Everything on those is looking good. Doesn't seem like there's any scoring in any of them. So I would say pretty good. I just have to clean up the surface of the head now. I can lay the head gasket on here, and put it on, put it all back together. All right, I got the head surface cleaned up. <clears throat> it doesn't look like it, but there's, it's pretty smooth right now. Uh, I'm probably gonna run over it with some brake clean, uh, break off a little bit of the carbon in the combustion chambers here. I also did notice this piston here has like a freaking factory defect of some sort, uh, where it's like pushed down there. The cylinder wall looks okay in that spot, so I'm just going to send it, but I do need to go get some assembly lube, probably some copper spray just to help even out any of the imperfections in the block in the head, and then um, get back to the grind. All right, so I just got back from picking up some of this uh, copper spray gasket. So this you're supposed to put on head gaskets, um, basically on multi-layer steel ones, especially if you've not had your head or the block machined. It just helps provide an extra barrier in between and kind of fills any potential minor imperfections in the head and the block surface and just kind of fills that in. So that's what I want to be doing. I also picked up some of this Lucas assembly lube. This stuff I use to assemble the Miata's engine and I've had no issues with it. So I kind of just trust this one. It's personally why I went with that. And of course, we've gotten some brake clean and some more shop towels and stuff as well. So I'm gonna get to uh, reassembling everything. I gotta make sure the surface is nice and clean. So I'm gonna take some good old brake clean, spray it all in here. like that you pretty much just coat the entire gasket in that copper spray both sides or whatever side hasn't been machined and you can uh, wait a little bit for basically the smell to dissipate and then you can start reassembling So I got the head bolts just kind of sitting in there. I'm gonna run them down just so they're like hand tight. And then I'm gonna go around and do a couple torque sequences on it to make sure it's all good and tight. And I'm just gonna use this torque sequence. So in actuality, what we should probably do, instead of just going gung-ho at 44 foot-pounds, start at 20. Start at 20 foot-pounds. All right. Did 20, now I'm gonna go up to 40. Uh, 
and one more time for good measure. All right, so now this is ready for the new cams. I'm just going to put the valve covers off of the supercharged engine on here. Just so they can help prevent getting any dust in there. Of course, there's still some dust that can get in through there, but I'm not too worried about that. But that'll bring me over to here to be able to get the HKS cams out and get those in that engine over there. Now, of course, I don't have a pulley puller right now, but um, what I'm probably gonna do, because it doesn't have the cam caps anyway on the front, I'm just gonna pull the cam gears right off the front, just let the timing belt do its thing. All right, so I got the cams out of this engine. Got them all cleaned up and put in here. I got some assembly lube on everything. And I just gotta pull the uh, cam caps out of the ultrasonic there, and then I can just dry them off. Add some more assembly lube to those as well and get everything tightened down. All right, so now I got the cams in. Uh, this is the next day. I was a little bit busy yesterday, so I had to stop. I did get every, <clears throat> all these kind of eh, at least close down. I still have to torque them to spec. So that is what I'm gonna be working on right now. So I have to be able to torque them to spec. So I'm gonna need can shaft bearing cap cylinder head. That is a nine foot pounds or 13 newton meters, which I do not have a small enough foot pound torque wrench. So I'm gonna convert nine pounds to uh, inch pounds with my handy dandy calculator right here. Nine foot pounds to inch pounds. And there we go. 108 foot pounds, or sorry, 108 inch pounds. All right, and also have to do a torque sequence with this as well. All right, so now I'm gonna take some genuine Fippage, a uh, Toyota Fippage, formed in place gasket maker and uh, just put a little bit in each of these corners right here. And then I'm gonna lay my genuine OE gaskets on there with the valve covers and then tighten everything down. You know, it's funny, in that Haynes manual, they don't give you a uh, torque spec for the valve cover uh, um, caps or um, nuts here that go on top. So I'm just going to torque them to about 60 inch pounds, five foot pounds. And in my opinion, no build is complete without some fresh spark plugs. So. All right, finishing touch, got a little gasket on here. Now I just have to find the bolts. All right, so I've got everything assembled on there. Got the new head gasket in, uh, valve cover gaskets, uh, graded cams now. Everything's pretty much reassembled. Just have to find bolts that'll go in here. The bolts that actually um, are supposed to go in there didn't look all too well. So I'm gonna get something to try to match this. That'll just go down in here. It's not like it has to hold anything major down on the engine. So I'm gonna do that. Um, next, I'm going to start reassembling the front here. Get the cams lined up. And then I can start putting the timing belt back on, get everything put back all together, and go from there, yeah.
So what I'm doing here is I'm lining up all the timing marks up here, here, and down here. So down here, you're supposed to line up this little notch with this little mark on the timing cover. So if you can see that little divot in this gear down here, and then same with right up here. This little dot lines up with the little dot on that timing cover there, or on the backing plate. Same with this side as well. That dot matches up there. Not these dots down here. Not those ones, because those ones you will set the timing wrong if you accidentally do that. Alright, so also when you're setting the uh, timing belt up here, this little sliding dowel here is a 12 point, which is kind of weird, but that's what you need to be able to set that. Setting that pulley on there, there's this little pin right down here you're going to set this uh, tensioner pulley on. And then you're gonna hook the spring right around there and then you'll be good to uh, install the timing belt. Now because this is technically under tension right now, or would put the timing belt under tension, you're gonna wanna back this off and loosen this as much as you can. We're gonna use my little pry bar here. Again, some more OE Toyota parts, another Toyota timing belt. Now what I want to do when I build the other engine is get an HKS cam gear set and HKS timing belt and get the clear uh, timing cover so everything will be all nice and purple up there. And when you get an OE Toyota timing belt, it also asks you to put this um, on the timing belt cover basically so you can say how many kilometers or miles it was replaced at in both Japanese because well they have them in Japan and then in English. Alright so once you get the belt on just like that what you're gonna do is you're gonna loosen your tensioner. Let that get all nice and tight. Then you're going to temporarily tighten this like that. And then what you're going to want to do is rotate the engine over at least two times. Just to verify all the timing marks still line up. So I'd say we're lined up here. That one's lined up. That one's lined up. And then what is it right down here? That is all lined up as well, those two dots. So we're good to go. All right now, so now that I have everything put together and I know it's at top dead center and timing is set, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the distributor. This is cylinder one. This is, ooh. I can't remember now. Anyway, cylinder one is the only one I really need to worry about, this one right back here. And since I know that one has a contact point way down here in the bottom of the cap, it's way down there, I just have to make sure this is clocked down there as well. So that is clocked down there, this is cylinder one. All I have to do is just plug this right into the head now. Now, I also am going to be deleting the distributor, basically. I have to keep this portion of it because it has a cam angle sensor basically built into it. So, with that in mind, I just have to get the block off cap, and then I'm gonna be switching over to coil on plugs. Or I should say coil near plugs with LS coils. All right, guys, so I think I'm gonna end the video here. It's probably gonna be a little bit shorter than what you guys are used to. At least did go over how to do timing belt and everything on this engine. 
can be kind of complicated, kind of time consuming, but once you get it down, pretty simple. But um, I'm gonna have a lot more in the next video. I'm going to be doing, of course, reassembling the front timing cover, probably get this up off of the jack stand, put the flywheel on, I put the new clutch on, and maybe even drop it in the engine bay, but I also have to cut out the battery tray and do a couple other things in the engine bay, like remove uh, cruise control stuff and get everything ready for the engine to be able to drop in through the top, because now that I'm gonna have everything apart, should be able to just drop this right in through the top with no issue. And I'm probably just going to leave everything apart, intake manifold, exhaust manifold, just so it can drop right in. It's going to be quite a bit easier. And you also will see me tear down this engine a bit more. Um, I still plan to work on this. My number one goal right now, though, is to try to get this in here and this back up and running for now. And then I'll jump back on this to be able to see what all is inside of this engine and what I can use. So, um, if anything, if I can't use the head because I can't find the cam caps, what I'll do is I'll steal the head from this at some point and then use the bottom end from this since it's already built and go from there. But I'll tear this down, see what I can do, go from there. In the meantime though, I greatly appreciate all 500 of you guys who subscribe to the channel and I do have quite a bit more coming. I'm gonna to try to create my own store just so I can get a little bit of products out to you guys like some shirts and stuff. Of course, this isn't mine. But I will have a lot more coming for you guys, so it's going to take a little bit of time, but stay tuned, and just remember, don't quit on a body that won't quit.